Hi all, this is Maria and thanks for joining me in my studio. Today's project is this really pretty vintage rose dot mandala. I hope you enjoy this. We'll be adding something special to give this a little bit of bling. These are the colors I'll be using. Golden straw and bleach sand for the background. Vintage pink, cotton candy, baby pink, and petal pink for the main part of the painting. And for the green I'll be using Hauser Light Green. For the tools I'll be using are my regular dotting tools, the uh, crochet hooks and my nail dotters. And then I'll also be using the screwdriver set. This is the Bropy screwdriver set and you'll see a link in the description below. And this will be to make the little seed shapes for some of my leaves. And then I'll be using this uh, mixed media adhesive and the sequins in 10 millimeter and 5 millimeter. These sequins are fun because they come in so many beautiful colors you could do all kinds of combinations. A peacock painting would be fabulous. I'll be using an artist sponge and you could use a cosmetic sponge or some other type of sponge. You could even cut up a, um, a clean kitchen sponge and the golden straw and I'm using that for my background and I'm actually going for a, uh, for a sponged look so there'll be a variation in the paint. It won't be a complete solid uh, color of paint. So I'll just sponge that on and then I'm using the bleach sand to lighten up the middle of that. So I get a nice coverage, do the edges and the back. And you can see, uh, if we take a look at this, you can see that it's not uh, a completely solid color. There's some variance there because it's a sponge look. Be using one of my stencils to put a grid on this canvas and of course I want to remind you to always start with the center so I find the center and then place my grid down um, so that I know that it's placed correctly because sometimes the canvas sizes are different or there's a slight variation in the um, the stencil so I always line it up to the center and this is regardless of the type of stencil that you're using and then I'll just go ahead and mark my canvas I'm using the General's char uh, Charcoal Pencil. I'm going to start off with the Vintage Pink and my K10.5 6.5 millimeter dotting tool and then a sort of a, um, on the larger side of my nail dotter, it's not the largest set and you know it's hard for me to give you exact because these nail dotter sets are so very different but I'm using the Cotton Candy and I'll put in my first row of dots and then I'm using the um, the Hauser light green and a small nail dotter to fit in between two little dots in between here and I'm just starting to bring in some of that green for the foliage. Now I'm using the baby pink and the, a little bit larger nail dotter and I'll add those dots. Using the green again I'm going to place two little dots in between those last row. Now if you can't get two dots in don't worry just put one. Just uh, use a size that fits. And now I'm going in with my G6 four millimeter and the vintage pink and just dropping a row of dots. I really love the variance in these colors. It's a little tough to see, I think, uh, with the camera lights, but it's really pretty. And now I'm going to use the vintage pink and, I'll, and a, a pretty small nail dotter and I'll walk those dots around. You can see these are pretty fine dots. One thing I want to mention here is if you're actually going to use the sequins, I would go ahead and knock down the little button I'd use a nail dotter and just flatten out that uh, the center of those dots so that it's a little bit uh, easier to adhere your sequin to. Otherwise, um, you can just leave this uh, as you would normally dot if you don't want to use the sequins. Okay, good, we're done with that row. Now I'm going to just add a little spike, four little dots on in the center, in the middle of each of these um, vintage pink dots, and just pull those spikes out. I'm 
Now I'll be using my I9 5.5 millimeter and at the tip of each one of those spikes I will use the baby pink and place a slightly larger dot. Using a nail dotter, I'm going to walk dots around that baby pink dot with petal pink. I'm using the petal pink here. Slightly darker. All right, now I'm going to start using my screwdriver set and I'm actually using the four millimeter size to make these little leaves, these seed shapes. You can see that I'm angling the screwdriver just a little bit to get a little bit of a, um, a little point there, a little angle. Then I'll go in with my nail dotter and I will just drop a little dot of the vintage pink. That's the darkest pink that I have in this particular painting. And then I'm using my I9 5.5 millimeter and the petal pink and going in and placing a dot. Now I'm leaving a slight, can you see this, a little bit of space here because I'm going to go back in and I'm going to add the, the uh, some more of the little seed shapes for the leaves. You could do that before you place the petal pink down, it's just your preference as to how you would like to paint it. And here I go in, I'm just going to make that uh, kind of like a little X shape. And now I'm going to start walking dots around and I'm going to build this one up a little bit more. So I'll start with a cotton candy and walk the dots around. I thought it would be really pretty in this painting to add the sequins because I absolutely love them and there's so many different colors it'd be um, so pretty to have some paintings with the sequin and adds a little bit of sparkle. I love crystals too, but I um, I want to try something a little bit different. Let me know what you think. Do you like the sequins? I like the fact that I can dot right on top of them actually. All right, so I finished up that row and now I'm going in with the baby pink and I'll place a row. I'll walk the dots around with the baby pink for each one of these little petals. And I'll speed that up just a little bit so we can see how this is shaping up. All right, now I'm going in again with my nail dotter and placing a row of the petal pink. The colors dry slightly darker. I think um, that's the case with most acrylic type paints. There's a little uh, variance in how the colors dry. Um, so you'll have a little bit more contrast in the finished piece.
Okay, I'm using uh, my largest nail dotter to drop a little bit of that green in the valley here between each one of these petals. And then I'm using my five millimeter screwdriver and I'll place a little bit larger leaves on each side of these little green dots angled right up against the petal. Alright, and now I'll use a small nail dotter and I'm going to walk dots in green from the tip of those petals, those little leaf shapes, the seed shapes, up to the tip of the petal. Just kind of hugging that petal. Oh, little boo-boo. Okay, great. Now I'm using the vintage pink and a, um, a smaller nail dotter to drop what I call a reference dot and I'm just trying to give myself a little space um, and understand the space. Now I'm going in with the vintage pink and the I9 5.5 millimeter crochet hook and dropping a dot there. Now I'm going to change, I'm going to vary uh, this a little bit. I'm going to use my nail dotter and I'm going to place a dot and then just walk in the sort of the midpoint of that large dot and walk them down to the top and then again on the other side. So it's making kind of like a diamond shape there. Just a little variation of shape for interest. All right, now I'll walk some dots around. And then take notice of how I'm doing the top of this. Two larger dots, so it's kind of like a little crown there, a little triad at the top. And we'll do that all the way around. And just another way to form a petal. Okay, now at the tip of um, each one of those little green arches, I'm going to place another green dot, and this will start me on my next row.
Okay, coming up on my last green dot. Now I'm going to use my five millimeter screwdriver to make another set of petals. Little seed shapes, leaf shapes. You can see that I'm angling it slightly as I did before. I think it's fun to add these additional shapes into the dotting. It's really pretty. It adds a nice little bit of interest. So we'll just keep going around with that. Now I'm going in with my largest crochet hook, which is the P16 11.5 millimeter and the baby pink and dropping a large dot. Now this is where I was mentioning earlier that if you want to add the sequins, you want to knock down those buttons. It's especially important on these larger dots. I didn't do that really consistently um, because I'm kind of designing as I go, but um, in retrospect, I think it would be best if you want to add the sequins and glue them down to have a flatter surface. My paint dried fairly flat, but not flat enough, so I would suggest you go in and just use a nail dotter and spread that button out a little bit so that you get a flatter surface. And I'm using the baby pink and I will walk dots up starting at the tip of that leaf, each one of those leaves, and hug the centered uh, petal dot. the vintage rose and my G6 four millimeter hook to place a large dot at the uh, top point of each one of these petals and use a larger nail dotter to walk the dots around. And you can see that at the top, it's a little flat. Um, the, the smaller dots with the nail dot are sort of at the midpoint of that larger middle dot. Um, I don't know if you can see that. So it gives a little flat, so I'm going to add a little extra crown there to um, bring that to a point. And we'll just keep walking those dots around. Okay, and I'm using a smallish nail dotter. Actually, it's on the fairly small size to put three little, a little crown, three little dots there, and then um, one on either side to just fill in the space. And that will give me a little pointy tip to this petal. Now I'm going to take a small nail dotter and just start to fill in a little bit of the space. You can see I'm um, on that vintage pink petal. I'm sort of at the halfway point and I'm just walking some dots down to meet the um, 
the previous little green arch there. Hope you can see that okay. And this is just to fill in a little space and I'm going to put some little leaf sprays so I want to have a kind of like a stem here. And it's a pretty little way to kind of cup that, that petal. And now I'm going to use the smallest of my screwdriver set, which is three millimeter. And I'm just making a little, little leaf spray. So I have a, um, my first sort of seed style dot, two on either side, and then one sort of in the center. And you could pull that out a little further uh, to make it a little bit, to, to maybe simulate a leaf, a different shape of leaf. And that's just pulling some of the color up towards the center of that rose petal. All right, now I'm going to start to do the edges. So I'll use my largest nail dotter and place a dot of green slightly above the edge of the canvas because I want to go in with a pink dot beneath that. And then I will use my um, three millimeter crochet or uh, screwdriver set, the piece from the screwdriver and put a little spray of leaves here. That's just three little dots. And I'll do that all the way around. Okay, now I'm going to do the corners and I'm using a, my largest nail dotter to put a drop of green in each corner, slightly in from the edge of the corner because I'm going to put another drop there. And I'll be using my N15 10 millimeter uh, size uh, dotting tool to place a drop of vintage rose. And use my nail dotter and some green to walk some dots up around the bottom of that particular rose. And then I'm using my four millimeter screwdriver to add a little spray of leaves at each tip of the green. Go in with a nail dotter and walk some dots around the top part of that center large dot and drop a little bit of pink at the end, at the tip. And don't forget, if you're going to frame this, you'll want to pull some of these pieces in a little bit so you have enough space for the frame and don't cut off any of the painting. Okay, this is how it's looking so far. Okay, taking off all of my lines with just a damp Q-tip. Of course, your paint is relatively dry, if not completely dry. And then I'm using my H8 five millimeter to just place, using the baby pink, I'll place a little dot here. And now I'm just really filling in the background. I'm using a nail dotter, putting drops of different colors of the 
pink. I'm using vintage rose here to just put a little, um, just add a little bit of interest. This is kind of looking like old wallpaper to me. Uh, I don't know what you think about that, but I'm just adding some little drops. And now I'm going in with the green. Uh, I'm actually using my three millimeter screwdriver to put a little spray of leaves at each one of those dots. And now I'm just showing you the some of the top dotting. This is where you decide what you want to do. If you want to add sequins or you want a top dot, you can see I've got a little bit of top dotting going on there on those little sprigs. I've added some little green dots to kind of fill it in. And I added some little vintage uh, pink dots at the tips of some of the leaves on the corners and then top dotted some of the other places where I won't be putting sequins. So I'm just kind of trying to give you a little close up. You could go on and top dot this now and just finish up your painting with paint, but I'm gonna go ahead and let this dry completely. Let all of the paint cure. And then I am actually going to put a layer of varnish. Now I use a matte varnish and so it's um, it's there's not much shine there's a tiny little bit of shine but there's not very much but I have sealed to this and now I'm going to start using my adhesive don't forget that this is completely dry and the paint is cured so I'm using this adhesive it's got a little fine tip which I like and I'm going to place a little adhesive on each of the um, first parts of the design that I'm going to put the sequins on. In the middle uh, I'm using a 10 millimeter and then on the smaller one I'm only using two sizes a 10 millimeter and a 5 millimeter sequin and I'll just go ahead and place those on. And I'm putting them on with my fingers I'll use a little tweezers to sort of set them down into the glue. If some of the glue happens to seep up through the hole of the sequin which it's likely to do um, I just take a little tea toothpick and scoop you know scoop that little bit of glue off um, because I actually am going to top dot these and so I don't necessarily want a little button of glue there it's it's okay if it fills in the hole because that'll actually help us um, in when we start to top dot but I don't want a little button of glue there if that makes sense so I want to take off you know just kind of take off the little tip of glue and use my um, either my fingers or um, a tweezer to make sure those are well seated into the glue and this particular glue that I'm using dries relatively fast it's not like a super glue but it does dry fairly fast so I don't put a whole lot of the glue down first I do a little bit at a time and then just place those sequins what's really pretty about this is because in some places we used a larger hook um, there's going to be a little shadow of paint behind the sequin, which is really, really pretty. See how it's already adding some, some sh shine and a little bit of sparkle? I think that's so pretty. Again, you could do this with crystals. If you wanted to add crystals, a little shine, or you could just top dot it. Now I'm on the outside and I'm using the uh, 10 millimeter. And this is where I told you, you know, I would knock it down. I was designing this as I went, so I didn't necessarily do that. I think I did it on the um, on the corners. But I would go ahead and knock this down, knock that paint down by just, you know, taking a little um, one of my nail daughters and swirling that paint down to make it a little bit flatter. And there you go. Isn't that pretty? Little dimension too. Now I'm going to let this completely dry, and I'm talking, you know, 24 hours. And then I'm going to come back in and with my regular acrylic paint, I will just top dot this using a size of uh, tool that I think works. These particular, most of these have at least one top dot on the sequin. And in some instances, there are multiple top dots. One thing that I want to alert you to uh, when you're top dotting on this sequin is you know that the sequin has a hole in the center. So when I top dot, some of that paint is going to fill in that little hole in the center of the sequin and it may have a I may have a little divot there you know where it's kind of filled in um, it's not seeping behind it but it is filling in that little depression and so if that's the case I let it dry and then I'll just put another drop of the same color on to kind of fill it in you know a little smaller tool and I'm filling in that that divot 
Um, and so you might, you are likely to have to do the same thing. Uh, just keep that in mind as you're, as you're going and doing your top dotting. But in the end, I have enough paint built up that I can't see that little divot there. And so just go ahead and top dot it and we're ready to start looking at the final results. All right, let's take a, a close look at the corner details and the side details. Let you get a look at that and also what the top dotting, final top dotting looked like. And then here's the final piece. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed adding, seeing sequins added to the dot mandala. Let me know what you think about that. Is that a technique that you would try with your dot mandalas? Thanks so much for joining me in my studio. Take care.